Hi, this is Madison with Portrait Displays. Today, we're going to show you how to calibrate a 2019 Sony AF9 OLED TV. Our technical evangelist, Tyler Pruitt, will walk you through the calibration process by using Portrait's Calman Home for Sony color calibration software. Tyler will also be using Portrait's Video Forge Pro to generate the test patterns that get shown on the TV screen and Portrait's C6 HDR2000 colorimeter to analyze them. There are three things you need to calibrate a TV. Calibration software, like Calman Home, a meter to read the color patterns on the screen, like a C6 HDR2000, and a pattern generator to put the color patterns on the screen. The patterns that are generated are just rectangles sent to the screen that have a specific color value. During the calibration process, Calman tells the pattern generator to send a specific color to the screen. The meter reads the color and reports back to Calman. Calman knows the value of the color that was sent and compares it with the value read by the meter. Then Calman makes adjustments to the TV so the two values match. Take it away, Tyler. Thank you, Madison. Hey, this is Tyler, Portrait Displays Technical Evangelist. We're going to get right to it. Today we're calibrating in this video a Sony OLED television model A9F with Calman Home for Sony. So I'm going to open our AutoCal workflow. OK. So the first step is we're going to connect to our meter. So I'm going to hit this Find Meter button. We're using our uh, C6 HDR2000 meter. If you are using an X-Rite i1 Display Pro, when I set this meter mode on the C6 for OLED white Sony, on the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, you would set it to RAW XYZ. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to connect to our pattern source. So this is going to be the Video Forge Pro. Hit connect. We also support a whole bunch of different um, pattern sources. For example, Raspberry Pi, the HDMI out of your laptop, Mobile Forge, MadVR, MadTPG, or our Client 3 software. So you have a, a, a lot of different options on to what to use as a pattern generator. Okay. First, a little bit about this process. So the way Sony has engineered this is they want you to calibrate the panel to the TV's 2.2 gamma preset. Then, after that calibration is done, they derive all the other gamma modes and even HDR based on that calibration. So that's just a little background on this process. It's a little bit different than any of the other manufacturers. Okay, so we're gonna go to next. Now we're going to take our pre-calibration measurements by hitting our read series button down here. Okay, now our pre-calibration measurements are done. We're going to go on to the next step. Now we're going to connect to the TV. So on your Sony TV, you need to go and download from the Google Play Store on the TV the Calman for Bravia app and then launch it. After the app is launched, you'll see in the upper left hand corner which HDMI port your pattern source is connected to. So you want to make sure you select which HDMI port, so one through four, make sure that that is selected and your patterns are showing up on the screen or your source is showing up on the screen. The next step is to look at the upper right hand corner of the Bravia app and that will show you your IP address of the TV. So in this case I see mine so I'm gonna hit find Sony TV and we're gonna enter the IP address here. That is the IP address 
and then I'm going to hit connect. When the TV connects, the UI of the Bravia app on the television will actually go away and that's so it doesn't affect our measurements when we're doing our calibration. Okay, now that we're connected, we're going to, we can have, these are the two picture modes we can calibrate. Now, if you want to use this, say custom for Pro 1 for a night mode, reference viewing mode, and custom for Pro 2 would be a day mode. One thing to keep in mind is in order to make these completely independent from each other, so if I want to do custom for Pro 1 here, all the grayscale calibration is tied to color temperature settings. So in order to have this independent from custom for Pro 2, we need to go up to the DDC menu and we need to change the color temperature. So what I usually do is color, if I'm doing custom for Pro 1, I make sure color temperature is expert 1. And if I do custom for Pro 2, then I use expert 2. And after that, those modes are completely independent from each other. But if you don't change the color temperature, then you'll just write over the existing calibration. Okay, so we've done, we've selected this. Now we're gonna cl click full DDC reset. That's gonna reset all the settings. Uh, so we're ready for the calibration. Okay, now that's done. Now we're going to go to our peak luminance step. We're going to go down and hit our auto cal button and we can pick our white level target. This is our peak brightness. So for a night mode, you want to use 100 candelas per meter squared or nits. Uh, for a day mode, I would usually set it to like 250. So we're going to do 100 here. Hit OK. And it will run through an auto cal of the luminance. Okay, next step. Is our grayscale. Now for the best results, I've found if you go up here, you wanna make sure, so you click the gear wheel, go to application measurement options, and we wanna set this AutoCal Delta E formula to DEITP. The default is 2000, but I found that if you want the absolute best results, you want to change it to DEITP. Okay, so now we're going to hit our AutoCal button. Hit OK. And it will take about five minutes to run through the grayscale calibration. Okay, even faster than I predicted. So almost three minutes, excellent results on the grayscale. Next step is our CMS. So once again, we're gonna hit our AutoCal button, then hit okay. Okay, we're done with the CMS. Next step. Check our peak luminance. So we could look at our brightness and contrast patterns if you have that supported in a in your um, pattern source or you could use a disk. Um, if we're just gonna check our peak luminance again, we just click on 100 here and then take a single reading. So we're at 98. I usually say if it's plus or minus five, it's fine. And then if we want to look at our, make sure we're not getting any clipping of above white information, we hit read series here.
Okay, we're not seeing any of that. The reason this says 120 nits is because the last reading was 109% or 255. Really, when we talk about 100 nits peak brightness, we refer to um, 235 or 100%. Okay, next step is our post calibration readings. So we hit the read series button. All right, now we're going to go to the next step. This shows us our before and after results. So we can save our data, and that is the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.